Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. We are on video number three of our Rebuild the Temple series, and this video is all about movement, motion. Okay, so as a recap, you know, the first, first video we just kind of talked about uh, the importance of um, not only why you would maybe want to take care of your body, but uh, laid out some strategies to start moving the needle forward on that. And video two, we talked about diet and how important that is and that we're eating real food and not eating too much. Today is all about motion. Now here in our own self-defense, when it comes to motion, we have to keep in mind that we're, our bodies are really hardwired to save energy. Uh, for thousands and thousands of years as human beings, uh, you know, as our genetics have been forming over the years and just different variations of our genes, genome has developed over the last you know, 100,000 years. Um, it's important, or some say millions, it's hard to say um, how long we've been around. But one thing's for certain, um, we, had a, we had a move, we had to move a lot in, in order to uh, capture our food. So that's not true in today's world you know today uh, according to some statistics here you know 24 percent of, of americans get no physical activity zero which you know is kind of hard to believe but at the same time you know we have the grocery store that uh, i'm you know very blessed that we live in a time uh, especially with four kids that you can order groceries online and have them delivered to your front door um, or you can just you know walk to your car sit down drive have someone throw food in your window at you and you know you never really have to move so here's here's the deal you know 24 percent don't get any exercise and 70 percent of adults get you know less than 30 minutes uh, the challenge with that is is that it really is leading to some major major health challenges when we take what we're eating in in coordination with the high stressful lives that we're living and then the lack of motion it's really the the you know perfect storm of, uh, of stress that allows our bodies to you know, maladapt or get weaker over time. So just uh, from a, just think about this for a second, you know, the, the lack of movement, when we look at the conditions that um, the health concerns and conditions that form through lifestyle choices and lack of movement specifically, lack of movement is, is now currently the third leading cause of death in the United States and it contributes to the second leading cause of death, uh, which really um, is associated with you know obesity and, and insulin regulation types of issues and they're probably all uh, related to those hormones in some way. Um, it's hard to believe. It's hard to believe that we're there. Now, a lot of uh, folks out there are led to believe that this is due to you know genetical genetic issues, uh, obesity, for instance, and weight gain is you know we blame it on on uh, bad genes. And, and although um, you know the the epigenetics and the development of our genome and through our family ancestral history does uh, you know predispose us to some things potentially. Uh, genes don't change as fast as some of the stats I'm going to share with you. Just to, this is just a way for me to point out that you know genes are not the 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 one to blame here in most cases, especially when we look at you know science telling us that you know less than zero one percent, so with one one hundredth of a percent of all health conditions are actually related to a specific uh, gene disorder, genetic disorder. Um, here it is. You ready? So in 1999, according to vital statistics taken through the, the CDC, um, zero of the states in our union, zero out of the 50 states in our union uh, were able to um, claim uh, obesity rates above 20 percent. So that means everything, everybody, every state in the union was under 20 percent obesity. And in the year 2000, that number jumped up to 22 states. So, so now 22 states are above that level of 20% obesity. And then we fast forward just five more years, and then there's only four states that are below 20%. And we have 17 states now above 30%. So the point of me sharing that with you is simply this. Genetics don't change that fast. Okay, it's got to be something else. Um, we get into the whole cost of everything, but... Uh, 
you know, healthcare and, and cost and all that is a, you know, big expense. It's a big drain on our economy. Actually, it's uh, <laughs> healthcare itself is the 17, uh, is uh, 17% of our gross domestic product here in the United States. So it is a big money maker, but it also drains our whole system of uh, where our resources could be going as well. We're spending it on sickness. And to the degree that when we look at like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, obesity, digestive issues, um, arthritis, and you know, even fractures from osteoporosis, when we look at like just those seven conditions, we're spending uh, above two billion dollars a day on those, and um, they're admittedly in most scenarios lifestyle. Uh, it's, it, it has to do with your body just not handling the lifestyle properly. So we're here at Family First Chiropractic. You know, one of the things that we want to do, and I know that we, we have a more of a family focus, but we want to, we want to help people buck those trends. Uh, it, chiropractic alone and, and, and the chiropractic services that we provide do an excellent job of helping your body adapt to that, but we have to start focusing on some of these other lifestyle things in order to, for you to get the, the greatest result um, for you in terms of uh, keeping your body healthy and strong. So uh, there's that. There's that. So what are some of the benefits of exercise? And let's talk about that. We talked about the faults of, uh, of um, our inactivity, but when you exercise, it does, it changes your hormones. Okay. So in my mind, we look at, I look at exercise as simply being um, a mode to get something that you wouldn't otherwise get. Kind of like Kind of like how there's a lot of nutritional supplements out there. You got your B vitamins, you got uh, your fish oils, you got all these minerals, you know, we got all these nutritional supplements that are there because our diet can be lacking in some of those. Well, think of exercise as the same thing. You know, movement is absolutely critical for healthy brain function. And if we're lacking movement, a lot of things can go wrong. So think of exercise simply as being a way to supplement that movement up. We call it, uh, you know, get, get your vitamin M. Uh, we'll talk about that in the office as getting vitamin M. And um, the, the critical parts of this and uh, to think about really is that the motion, the way that your body moves it is a way to really charge up your brain. Uh, the, the biggest advantages to moving are, are simply this. When you move properly, you're going to have improved insulin sensitivity, improved cardiac function. Uh, you're going to have a lot better uh, body composition in terms of lean muscle mass versus um, you know, fat storage. Uh, your blood lipids are going to be more appropriate. Your immune function is going to be better. Skeletal health, so your bones will be stronger. And then ultimately, your brain is going to be able to work more efficiently. And I want to talk specifically about the brain aspect of that uh, because when it comes to movement really this is the this is this is the most appropriate place to fit chiropractic care into the lifestyle aspect of keeping your body healthy um, what happens is when the body's not moving there's certain little nerves that are in the joints of the body that just don't that aren't firing properly or they're not firing enough and then so what happens is a side effect because the brain's not receiving this information from the body then what it is receiving from the body in set instead is more of a distress signal and that can wind up this this stress response the stress response is a very important role in um, in sickness and really it's to put us more into survival is what it does we go out of thrive mode we go into survival mode and our bodies are really really good at surviving we can look around and see that you know this is when you see the guy walking around the grocery store with a shopping cart full of frozen pizzas and he's got mountain dews racked all the way around the cart itself and you, know, you look at this guy and you say wow he's uh He's, uh, he's, he's surviving, you know, he's still getting around even though he's pumping his body full of that stuff. So um, it's a testament to, to our body's ability to survive. But um, through motion, what we're able to do is combat that stress response and get a handle on our hormones, okay? Now, what exercise shouldn't be is a way to make up for a poor diet because the reality of it is, is that it just takes way too much movement 
to burn off excess of calories. When we look at from an energy in standpoint to an energy spent standpoint, if you are consistently taking in way more energy than you're spending, then the body is going to tip more into this, this stress response. Your body doesn't like all this energy substrate circulating the blood. So it's gonna try getting rid of it and storing it and, and doing what it can to help, to help get by. So, um, chiropractic's role in this in this process is by allowing the movements of the spine where those little neuroreceptors that the brain is using to perceive body positioning and motion and and to help basically charge up and calm down and in the stress response is um is uh, when when those joints are stiff or not moving properly um or when you're when your body's already stressed then things get stiffer and tighter and you know that's just uh you know what comes first the chicken or the egg but by introducing healthy motion back into the spine the brain's naturally able to calm that down it's just to give you some insight onto actually what happens or what's going on in the brain i have this uh these images i'm going to try to show throw up here in front of the camera for you to be able to see the effects of basically brain function on a very simple movement. Um, in this case, there is a functional MRI unit that was uh, being used to test brain activity while a woman was wiggling her ankle. And um, I'm gonna show this, I'm gonna hopefully you can see. Okay, cool, that's showing up okay. So see all the color on that image there? That's an image of the brain. She is asked to wiggle her ankle and, and you can see just all the areas of the brain that are that are firing here okay so then they pull this uh, lady out of the out of the unit they evaluated her they they had given her a very specific adjustment um, to help basically restore the tone and the balance of the central nervous system and and as an effect of that i'm gonna hold the second one up see if you can i'm gonna hold the first one up first and then the second one so this was before and this one was after. So look at those red dots and the blue. See how much calmer and more focused that brain is. The brain was perceiving a lot less stimulus after that adjustment. So that's before and that's after. So that is very impactful. Now, just imagine if you could get those results on your brain and getting your brain that focused and calmed by simply moving, because essentially that's what that's what uh, gives us the best result in the end. Is that uh, you know motion is is the key is the key to that game. Now, when you move. There's a couple of things that you can do, um, what, what you would consider exercise, right? So just like being busy isn't necessarily uh, a, a good exercise. You really, you, you want to um, you wanna be able to move to the point to where you're moving multiple joints at once, okay? Um, you're pushing your body around, you know, like going outside, walking up and down hills, walking on uneven surfaces. Really walking is, is what our bodies are really designed to do. You know, we used to walk up to nine miles a day historically as human beings um, uh, until very recently. So that walking alone is, uh, is, a, is a critical one. Um, but because we're looking at exercise as being a supplement, uh, we have to understand where are we getting these movement deficiencies throughout the day. Uh, what we know for sure is that if you sit for more than four hours a day, then the, the brain function, your brain function actually decreases. All right, I want you to think about that for a second. Uh, think about what our grandparents are going through right now. Think about how uh, we, we are seeing increasing levels of, say, like, you know, dementia and Alzheimer's. Did you know that just recently, I, I can't remember which, uh, which drug company it is, whether it was Merck or Pfizer, it was one of the big drug companies. They had just stopped all their R&D recently on, um, they're, they're no longer looking to create medications for Alzheimer's or for um, dementia. And the reason they stopped doing this was the only consistent results that they could produce was things were getting worse. 
and they figured it's just not uh, it's not a, a risk versus reward um, strategy anymore, you know, because they want to go out there and, and you know, let's hope that they're trying to help people too along the way. But really, it's you know they want to be able to make an investment into R and D so that they can produce a result in the in, and you know make their shareholders money. And they see this as being such a lose lose situation that after doing this R&D for as many years as they have, they just completely shut it down. So that's kind of cool, kind of like eye-opening, but the, reason, the, the reality of it is, is that the, the folks who get the best results um, in terms of you know, calming down those types of uh, conditions, Alzheimer's and, and uh, you know, dementia, is by uh, rapidly changing um, lifestyle by eating more appropriately and um, getting, getting movement into their body is, uh, is way more beneficial. So that's pretty cool to see how powerful the human body is to be able to heal if you're giving it, giving it what it needs, okay? So if you're sitting all day and you're leaning forward, what it's gonna do is it's gonna start creating a lot of weakness you know, through the mid back, even a lot of times in the low back as we slouch forward. It's gonna put a lot of pressure, <clears throat> excuse me, in the upper neck and on the shoulders. So it just makes sense that part of your, your, uh, your movement strategy is to help combat that by doing a lot more extension and, and opening up your chest and bringing back your shoulders and down your shoulders and, and creating exercise programs to combat that. So what you want to do really is more than uh, what I would want to do if I was struggling is really consult someone who is good at understanding movement. We have... We have a lot of awesome trainers in this Dubuque area that I would refer to and I have no problems at all recommending because I know that they're looking at things and they're doing they're doing it the right way in terms of getting motion where we need it. So if you're going to need that sort of help along the way, then go for it. Okay, um, Chiropractic care, if you're sitting more than four hours a day, in my opinion, it's a must. I'm not saying that because I'm a chiropractor. I'm saying that based upon what I see in the science and what I understand about body movement and neurology and how the brain works with the spine in terms of how function and structure all come together. And uh, that's, that's where we need to be. So keep that in mind. Now, I'm going to close this down. And if you have any questions along the way, shoot them over here. You know, like I said, you we're really, we're really rooted in this concept of we want our people to be healthy and happy, okay? Uh, our wellness folks, we want them to be healthy and happy. We want them to be coming to us because they're healthy, not because they're sick and injured. So, and we, and we get the results with the people that are really engaged and take this on, take this, uh, this idea on to try to figure out how to um, sustain and, and move forward and keep their bodies healthy and strong. So exercise for dummies, here we go, you ready? You really only have to do this supplement, this exercise supplement to get vitamin M movement. You really only have to exercise on the days that you eat. I'm not saying you got to go to the gym every day to eat. All right. Some people love that stuff and, you know, it's very beneficial for some, uh, but some people overtrain. So it's very uh, non-beneficial for others. But uh, you only really have to exercise on the days you eat. So what would I consider exercise? Well, you're only really exercising if you're moving your entire body like a human being would move. And while you're moving, you get to the point to where you're sweating and panting. That is exercise. Um, do what moves you, you know. If you have things that you just love to do, just do more of it. Get out there, move, and exercise. Uh, just do a little more than you did yesterday. Try to have this gradual improvement uh, on what you do. The only thing that you need to worry about being perfect on is your progression and your effort. Uh, that, that, that's, the, that's the big thing. Uh, that's the only thing that you really can perfect when it comes to movement is the amount of attention and effort and consciousness that you put into what you want to be doing. So... I'm going to be signing off. I want you to think about how you can move better. And if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, 
then go ahead and uh, send us a message. If you're sitting more than four hours a day, then call us for an evaluation. We'll get you in, we'll do a scan, we'll see how all that sitting is starting to affect your neurology, and we'll lay out a little game plan on how to get your body healthier and stronger. I hope you enjoyed this short video on movement, and we'll get together again next week for the last component of this, and that is think well, how you can get your thoughts to work for you instead of against you. Have a wonderful day.